Hello, my dear friends. Thank you for joining me. It's Poet WP, a.k.a. Gabriel Samadhi. Um, it's my pen name. I, um, wrote a poem. Started writing it last night. And then I left. I felt like, okay, I need to pick this up and write on it later. So then I got up this morning and I wrote the rest of it. Once in a blue moon, I'll do that. I have different processes of writing. I just, wherever my natural inclination takes me, you know, like Bob Ross would say, kind of thing. Just you can, you're, you can have anything you want in your universe. You can have some happy little mountains over here, you know. And just see where it takes you. <laughs> if you ever want to just chill out and you're having a stressful day, pull up a Bob Ross video. It's like a back rub for the mind. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, so yeah, I don't usually write in this style. Usually I'll write it all in one sitting, but this one, I felt the need. It's like, I gotta put this down and then I'll come back to it and finish it. Which is unique for me. I'm, I've only ever done that two or three times. Anyway, enough about the process. Let's get on to the message. This, call, this is called Becoming... Sorry for the misspellings and everything. This is my process. I know it's weird. This is just my process. This is how I like to do it. <laughs> anyway. Becoming who you must eternally be. The center becomes still as the vortex surrounds all energies. Speaking clear and clean. Omens, so-called. Dishing out contemplative turns. Facets of being revolve within the collective unconscious. A new standard for reality slowly falls into place. Like the timbers in a combination lock to the vault of the soul. You're lonely when you think of the past. The details add up to different circumstances in retrospect. Hold on, I got an itch. Sorry. I need three hands. Okay. The vestige of a dead totem. Its teeth crumble with the first bite of the divine. They're burning up like vampires at the first light of dawn. The shadow of a flame leaves only a smell. The directions of the winds are now rising to heaven. The cosmic quarantine has dissolved. All divine love is slowly finding its pathways like all streams that merge into the sea. We, the salmon, swimming upstream, life after life, to reach the further shore, the further shore we're looking for, as Kerouac put it, will gradually, as we are ready, each of us, find the perfect still, rippleless pool to exist in love and peace. You know, um, in this time of great awakening that I feel so many of us are going through, you know, it's important to listen to your heart, as they say, which is so cliche. But more than that, you gotta look, you gotta quiet your mind. Think non-thought. Do no talking. Do no internal dialogue in your mind. Find stillness. And you will find your intuition. And then you will find your true discernment. And then it'll all make sense. 
It can be frightening at first. But it's true liberation. Liberation from fear, anger, bondage, suffering, enmity, loss. The old paradigm that's crumbling. We will manifest heaven on earth. There's not a doubt in my mind. It's all lining up. It's in the air. Give it 10 years. We'll recognize this place and it'll be so much better. Have faith. Put your energy in that. Let go of fear. Let go of thing. Let go of self gain. You will know when you have enough, and then stop. How much shit do you need? <laughs> it reminds me, of George Carlin bit. Your house is just one big place to keep all your stuff. It's a cover for all your stuff. And then you got to lock all that stuff up so you can go out and get more stuff. People spending money they don't have buying shit they don't need to impress people they don't like. As Tyler Durden said. All that fucking bullshit dream is over now. You know the fuck, the baby boomers... God bless them. They had it all. They really got wrapped up. The 80s, man, really fucked their heads up. They really got wrapped up in, like... Their whole concept of self was, for the majority, money is power. Money is identity. Whoever dies with the most toys wins. Kind of shit, you know? That's why they're so... That's why they want to hoard shit. That's why you got all these... A lot of rich boomers with... Just... You know... Not an ounce of charity, but... Endless indulgences. You know how many old white men I know around here that have 90... Like, four ninety thousand dollars hot rods in their fucking big garages and shit. And fucking private airplane strips and shit. Wasting all kinds of goddamn money on shit they don't need just to fucking feed their ego. Uh, when they could, like, give that to, uh, homeless kitchens where people are hungry and shit, you know? It's just like that, you know, when Jesus said it's easier for a uh, camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. And the reason for that is because the rich man can ease a shit ton of suffering with his riches if he chooses to. <coughs> Bill Gates... Soros, no Soros, it's not Soros, all, all you fuckers, all you billionaires, you're lunatics, what are you doing, trying to control the world with your fucking money, yeah sure, that's a good idea, make everybody suffer so you can feel like a god, fuck you, you better come up off that shit, you could ease all the world's suffering, if just, if just ten of the goddamn billionaires, how much fucking... See, that's the thing. For them, it's not about having a hundred Ferraris and all the houses in the world. It's about controlling the fucking governments of the world so they can manipulate the people. And they're trying to play God. They're trying to play God with billions, all right? That's what it is. And they've been doing it for generations. It's nothing new. Talk about being deluded, right? Well, you know, all it would take, you know, you could keep like three or four billion or something. All you fucking assholes who have billions, trillions, the Saudis, those fucking dumbasses. 
None of you dumbasses. All you fuckers will be in hell forever. Ever. Forever. Never get out. Ever. Or, you could, like, maybe keep a couple billion, and, and, and you'd be good, and your kids would be good, and your all your billion will go forever, man. And you come up off all the rest of the shit, and you fix the world's goddamn problems. Right? Relatively simple concept. You know, this is a short fucking life. Maybe if you're lucky, you get 100 years, right? What do you think's going to happen when you die? After you, you could have fucking cured the world's, all the world's pain with your fucking money, and you didn't? You greedy prick. I guess maybe you don't believe in God. You think you're going to become a God when you die? Wrong. Worst part of hell is for you, fuckface. You want to you wanna spend eternity there, or you want to come up off your fucking shit and solve the world's problems? Somebody needs to say it. So fuck it, I'm going to say it. I'm saying it. So, uh, yeah. There you go, Bill Gates. All you other bastards out there. How about, you know, charity? Oh, you do charity. Oh, we give lots of charity. How about give it all? All of it. Keep what you got. Squirrel away a nice little bank account for the rest of your life so you can live in the lap of luxury to which you're accustomed. And then come up off the rest of it. All of you. That's what you need to do. Otherwise, shit, man. You can gain the world and lose your soul. It ain't going to work out well for you. I don't give a fuck what you believe. Whether or not you believe that's really what's going to happen when you die, it is what's going to happen. You're not going to escape. No fucking way. It doesn't matter if you don't believe it or not. Because you're deep, deep, deep in it with your shit. Anyway, a little message to the billionaires and trillionaires on the tail end of that poem. I hope some of you assholes see it. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day.